Hey there! So, this video is going to cover the Gul'dan back spikes. So, I approached the back spikes in kind of a, a combo style, um, in that I made kind of a backpack that incorporated both the spikes and the cloak. Um, because if you look at the pictures of him, it's very apparent the spikes are going through the cloak. And um, so I really wanted to make sure to kind of capture that um, instead of kind of putting something <clears throat> on top of the cloak. Um, so I'm going to show you what I came up with. It's really not pretty on the inside, I will say this. Um, but I learned a lot, and so hopefully what I learned I can pass on to you or whatever you might be working on, if it is Gul'dan, or even some other really crazy project that maybe requires you to put something on your back. So one big consideration is that these things are kind of sticking out all over the place, and I had made this with the intention of going to like a really crowded convention, and so I didn't want them to be very hard and stiff on my back, so that if somebody did run into me, which did happen, frequently. Um, the spikes wouldn't like break and it wouldn't like jab into my back so I went into it with the idea of using kind of a backpack frame. So something that wasn't very rigid, um, it was very flexible and this also allowed me to travel with it. So uh, let me kind of show the back. So I made six spikes. It's so big! Um, so, as you can see, like, it's super flimsy, um, there's no structural support in the back whatsoever, um, which allows for anyone to kind of hit them, and I don't have to worry about these puppies breaking. Um, they are made of foam covered in warbler, and then just some little indents made in acrylic paint. And then, um, I can kind of show what it looks like, it's not super pretty. But uh, I, I attached them before I painted them because um, Warbler needs to stick to itself. So I couldn't paint the whole thing and uh, I just needed to make sure that I got them in and secured before I really moved forward. So um, he does kind of have these uh, metal covers at the base so that at least allowed me the flexibility to not paint all the way down. And so you can see that um, I did cut holes in the cloak and yeah and these aren't really secured down um, again just the flexibility that if I needed to change them out I could that was it. so like I said I mean there's holes cut into it and these kind of help them stick out a little more um, they're still rigid but um, there is it's kind of hard to explain, but I have about at least a half an inch, most of them are, are an inch, of extra warbler on the outside forming a ring, a flat ring. Um, and this is because I did a sandwich method. So again, inside is not pretty, but... It's a kid's backpack, <clears throat> and so um, there is a gap at the top of my shoulder blades, so I tried adding some sort of like, padding so that they would not flop, and I still haven't been successful with that, um, so I can't say I've solved for that problem. It really, I guess, just depends on the kind of um, backpack, if you do go the backpack path. Um, but, yeah, I just bought a backpack and cut off the, the front. And so, um, maybe here you can kind of see. So, like I was saying, I left extra here. And then you can kind of see it's right there. So, it's a sandwich. So, warbla, backpack, warbla, sandwich. And that's exactly how it is with all of them. Um... So, some of them you can see have popped out, but 
it still held pretty well, um, just because one part is still pretty secured. But, uh, yeah, so when I put it on, the front of the cloak conceals the straps very nicely, so you don't see the contraption at all. And then the other part of this is that my shoulders attach to the backpack. So it's really kind of an all-encompassing contraption that I tried to put together. So what happens is there's a strap underneath the shoulder, each shoulder. So the strap goes in through the cloak here, over and under, so this way back through the hole and then velcros underneath the shoulder um, and so that works for both sides um, it worked pretty well only because the velcro was able to kind of I, there was extra velcro so velcro was gripping this um, I did notice that that method made the straps kind of um, clinch or like buckle a lot right here um, and so I think this is also partly why in most of the pictures you see the spikes kind of flop. Um, so even though the shoulders come down on my back some, and it does kind of help push uh, the backpack in to help support, um, the, the shoulders when attached just kind of make the backpack do a different thing. So when I put it on without shoulders, the spikes look one way, but then when I put the shoulders on and put the whole thing on, they do something completely different. And um, I just was never able to kind of figure out what was going on. Um, so I, I can't really provide any more answers to that other than um, it's kind of a trial and error thing. And obviously I don't think to backpacks are going to create the same, um, but at least the kind of backpacks that I had, six was the optimum number. There really wasn't room for another spike or two, unless I put it, like, oddly. Um, so, th I mean, that's another thing to, to think about. Um, yeah, so, and again, because they're all flimsy, um, Sorry if that was loud. They're able to kind of bundle up like this. And so they fit in a large suitcase. Um, these went into a large hard shell, like the largest size suitcase you can buy. Um, and it's just because this, again, was able to kind of like collapse. Um, it's not structured. Um, so one of my recommendations would definitely be if you're going to try and travel, Try and figure out a way to at least be able to add some sort of structural support into the backpack that you can take out so that you can still collapse it and pack uh, the spikes. Um, if you did it something like this, if you can figure out another method to kind of attach and reattach the spikes, I did consider kind of a magnet approach, but again, if somebody hit it I don't know, it, it felt like I would risk the spike falling off first uh, with magnets, even though that could technically be smoother, um, instead of fidgeting with this whole, like, warbler sandwich method. But uh, I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out, um, other than the top two spikes. Um, those have been my, my problems, because they don't stand up quite as high as I'd like. Um, and so th that just takes, you know, more people, more hands um, than I had. The last kind of recommendation I would make is because of this contraption that I built with shoulders being attached to an entire backpack, um, I really recommend <laughs> that you have help putting it on. Um, I was successful doing it by myself twice um, by attaching the shoulders first laying it on a bed and doing a fun little like wiggly maneuver um, like arching back um, really uncomfortable so if you're not super flexible and you do not feel comfortable with that I would definitely say this requires help um, 
probably the scaled costume, regardless of the approach you take, probably requires help. Um, but again, I just tried to figure out the best method that worked for me, because sometimes I don't have help, and so I need to be somewhat self-reliant. Um, but that's why you make friends, and so I had friends um, in a couple of times when I put this on, so very helpful in, uh, in those situations, and very, very thankful for their help as well. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of, of this contraption. Um, if I didn't answer all your questions and you have more, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, you can also check out pictures of how I built it at Facebook uh, on my cosplay page, Honey Bunch Cosplay. And yeah, thanks!